When someone calls a blues at a jam session or a gig or anywhere else, wouldn't it be great if you had a whole bag of tricks to make sure your bass lines were always fun and always interesting? Hi, I'm Luke from Become a Bassist, and in this lesson you're going to learn how to take a basic blues bass line and use turnarounds and walk-ups to create authentic next level bass lines that go beyond the basics, and of course we're going to have a ton of fun doing it. Before we get started and dive into these turnarounds and walk-ups, you should probably already have a pretty good understanding of how to make really basic blues bass lines. If you don't yet, that's all good, but I definitely recommend checking out my six authentic blues bass line formulas lesson. I'll put a link uh, right up here and of course in the description as well. Uh, take a look at that one, it'll get you up to speed really, really quickly. Now if you know some basic blues bass lines though, you can take the next step in making more interesting bass lines and you can do it using these things called turnarounds and walk-ups. Let's go through turnarounds first. Now turnaround in this context just means we're putting something at the very end of the 12 bar blues form that kind of leads into the next one. We're turning around and going straight back to where we started. So if we take a look at the blues bass form in A up here, you'll see that the last two bars is just a plain old A chord. And if we end uh, with uh, this form, we get two bars of the A chord, and then the next form starts with four bars of an A chord. It just ends up being a lot of A. Have a listen to what this would sound like. bars of A, and then another four bars of A. See what I mean? It gets to be quite a bit of A. But what we can do is use a turnaround to break that last two bars up, and we're going to put that, like I said, in the last two bars of the form. Now the first and most simple way to break it up is to make the very last bar an E chord rather than an A chord. This will lead very well into the next form, uh, and pretty much all the turnarounds we'll be talking about today end up on the E chord, yeah? And you can just kind of play the same old blues bass line formula for the E chord as you've been doing for the rest of the song. And if you do that, that'll sound something like this. Everything's the same so far. Change here. Yeah? See how we're getting that, uh, it kind of breaks up that big stretch of A and leads really well into the next form? This is exactly what we want. You can also do something similar, but delay the five chord, the E chord, by just a little bit and walk up into it from the four chord below. So that'd look like this. We get the last two bars. Yeah, A chord for one bar. And then we start on the A for the next bar and then go to the D and then walk up chromatically to the E. With the track, it'll sound like this. If we go to the last, uh, last little bit. Just like that. It's just a small difference, but you see this kind of thing everywhere. Next though, I want to give you two more uh, really common and super authentic blues turnarounds uh, that will work just about every time. We have first of all an ascending one and a descending one. And each ends up on that same E chord that we used in the last two examples. So uh, let's start off with the ascending one. Now for this we're going to start on the second last bar and play one, three, four, sharp, four, and five. So in this key that means we're going A, C sharp, D, D sharp before getting to the E. And you can play them as single notes just like that. Or if you want to make it a bit bouncier you can double them. Yeah, but that's the idea. Rather than just going kind of straight to the E chord, we're leading into it with this ascending line. And you can even mix this ascending line with that little walk up from, uh, from the last example. Let it sound like this. 
even more movement there, but still works really, really well. With the track, it'll sound like this. Just like that. How much more interesting is that? The other variation that gets used a lot is to play the ascending thing and then go above the E chord really quickly to the F, the flat six if you want to use the numbers, and then you can kind of just fall back into it really fast again. That'd sound like this. Yeah, makes sense, right? Now, there aren't any kind of hard and fast rules about when exactly to use each little device. And a lot of times, uh, you can use these devices, even if the people you're playing with use slightly different ones. I always try and keep my ears open for what other people are doing uh, and make sure whatever I play is actually complementing what they're doing though. All right, the descending turnaround, let's check that one out. Now this one is going to be in the exact same place in the form and it's gonna sound like this. Yeah, we're gonna go from the root, the high root, so the, I guess you can call it the eight, down to the flat seven, to the six, flat six, and then five. In the key of A, we get A, G, F sharp, F natural, and then E. Now with the track, it's gonna sound like this. Yeah, just like that. Again, we're leading into that E chord there. And again, you can use either of the uh, little extra devices there too. You can use the walk up from the four. That'll work really well. Uh, and if uh, you could also go back up to the flat six and back down again, that'd sound like this. Just like that. All those little devices, they're pretty interchangeable. So that's how turnarounds taken care of. You can mix and match the different ideas in there. And it's gonna make the ends of your baseline uh, phrases much more interesting and much more fun as well. But let's talk about one more device you can use, the good old fashioned walk up. Now this is great for breaking up the monotony of kind of only playing the same formula the whole time. Uh, you don't need to use it all the time, but it can be a really nice way to give your bass line a bit more variety, a bit of a boost, a bit more impact, and it is very, very simple. It works like this, in the bar, before a chord changes, you simply play the root of the chord you're on and then go three frets below the next chord and walk up chromatically into it. The first place this gets used, and it gets used a ton here, is in the fourth bar of the form. So in the key of A, we've already had three bars of the A chord and if we put a little walk up in the fourth bar, we get some variety and it makes the next chord in the form, the D chord, stand out really nicely. It'll sound like this. Walk up here. Yeah? See how it breaks up the A chord and leads really well into that D chord? That's exactly what you want. And to get it, all we did, play the root of the first chord, the A chord. We're going to the D chord, so we want to go three frets below that. One, two, three, and then just walk up chromatically into it. So we get A, B, C, C sharp, D. So we get fifth fret on the E string, and then second, third, fourth, and fifth fret on the A string. Super, super simple, but very effective. Now the second place to put this uh, little device is in the second bar of the four chord, in this case, the D chord. Now, the next chord we're going to is an A chord, so all we have to do is play the D on beat one, and then go three frets below our A chord, which is our target chord, and walk up into it. So three frets below this A, one, two, three, and then we're gonna go walk up into it. So we're gonna have, yeah, that's exactly what it'll be. Let's uh, put both of those into the form right here. Walk up here. Here we go. Yeah, just like that. Again, it's giving variety, but still really, really functional. The last place we'll talk about right now is going from the A chord in the eighth bar to the E chord in the ninth bar. Same exact deal. We'll play the root of the A chord and then go three frets below the E right here. One, two, three, and then walk up into it. Yeah, so if we start on the D chord and play through, it'll sound like this. Mm -hmm. 
Here it goes. And then we're in the turnaround there. Just like that, couldn't be simpler. Now you don't have to use all these walk-ups every time through every 12 bar blues form, but you can pick your moments. If you feel the tension kind of building through the first four bars and you want to release some of it, you can put a walk-up in that fourth bar, it's going to feel amazing. But that's the kind of general idea. So let's play through this blues one more time and mix and match all of these ideas, the walk-ups and the turnarounds, and you'll see how adding just these two ideas to your bass lines gives so much variety and so much interest. So let's go from the top. Let's put a walk up in here. And here as well. Let's go here as well. Let's get crazy with them. Ascending. Flat six. Yeah? See how that's so much more interesting and so much more fun than just going the whole time? Now there's nothing wrong with doing that at all because it's very functional, but adding these little devices makes everything so much more interesting and so much more fun. By the way, this lesson I've been using the kind of traditional blues bass line pattern, but you can use these kind of uh, walk ups and turnarounds no matter what kind of bass line you use. Now if you want the tracks from this lesson as well as the tabs and notations for all the walk ups and turnarounds, then click that first link in the description, sign up on that page, I'll send them straight to your inbox totally free. You can get started practicing with them in the next five minutes if you want. Then next time someone calls a blues at a jam session or a gig or anywhere, you'll have a whole bag of tricks you can pull from to make sure your bass lines are always fun, always interesting. To recap though, you learned all about turnarounds and walk-ups to spice up your blues bass lines. You learned that the simplest uh, turnarounds at the end of a blues form were to just play a five chord in the last bar, or to delay that five chord and then kind of walk up from the four chord. Uh, you also learned the two classic blues turnarounds, the ascending one, and the descending one. And of course you learned the power of walk-ups, where to use them to give your uh, bass lines more variety and impact. Thanks so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Make sure and head to the site to get the tabs, tracks and notation 100% free. But before you go, make sure to subscribe to the channel as well uh, and click the bell to turn on notifications. I'm Luke from Become a Bassist and I'll catch you really, really soon.